Hello and welcome to This Week in Cognitive. I am your host, Noella Sherity, and it is my pleasure to share with you some of the cool things we've got going on in cognitive services and applied AI. Today, I want to show you one of the tools that we use internally and that you actually have access to um, in order to test out some of the latest and greatest services inside of cognitive services and the applied AI organization. So I've shown uh, over the course of some of our episodes, we talk through a lot of the different services. And it's always really great to be able to have a way of testing them, right? Or um, building projects related to them. And one way that we do that uh, in, internally is through a tool called the Intelligent Kiosk. And so it gives you the ability to test out many of these um, services. But we also give you the ability to build that kiosk yourself. And so I'm gonna walk you through just a couple of those things. So first, the Intelligent Kiosk is an app that you uh, can download from the Windows Store. Uh, in your case, I'm also gonna show you in just a minute how you can build that app and deploy your own. But let me just talk you through a couple of the things that are in here. And anytime you go to like a conference or come to our executive briefing center here in Redmond, Seattle area, uh, you would have the ability to kind of test this out. It's a very, very unique way of seeing a bunch of different functionality in a single application. So you can see here, we've got uh, things like um, Vision Explorer, right? Being able to test out computer vision, being able to do real-time driver monitoring to detect uh, distraction. Um, we also have things like News Analytics and Emotion API, uh, real-time crowd insights. This is always a crowd pleaser at conferences, right? Where we put it up on kind of a big screen and add a couple cameras and as people walk by, it's able to instantly identify using the face API as well as computer vision, um, things like who, you know, a gender, uh, age range, right, sentiment, are they happy, sad, bored? Um, it's useful information typically at a conference, but it's super fun, right? A lot You always see people walking by and they try and change their face to get a different age to show up, and sometimes it doesn't work, uh, but sometimes it does. I do find that happy people look younger, so you should smile more often. Um, <laughs> but let's take a look at a couple of these. One is the um, ability for us to use vision. All right, custom vision, we're actually gonna combine a couple different services here, right? The first service uh, is Bing Search. So I need to go find an image to analyze, right? So I go in, I use Bing Search as a service in the app. You'll see this in the GitHub sample code. Uh, and maybe I would type in, you know, some of you are getting to know me. I like motivational quotes. So let's pick some of those. You'll notice what happened when I started typing in a couple letters auto suggest automatically suggested some options for me so that is also another service that you can take advantage of right so a bunch of things uh come up here i'm going to pick one uh it's a nice motivational quote here are some interesting things that happen as a result of this analysis now remember these cognitive services the reason they're so interesting is that you as a developer get to access them either through an sdk or a restful web service call Right? So very, very simple access. You pass in this request, send in the image in your RESTful call, and you get this data on the way back for you to do what you will within your application. So imagine here, if you're looking at this, right? it gives you these tags. It also gives you a description. Um, it gives you uh, celebrities, if there happen to be any, using face recognition. Right? But here's an interesting part, uh, colors. So it allows you to like take a look at an image. Maybe you have uh, multiple calls to action on your web page, right? And based on what that user picks, maybe they pick one that has blues in it, right? As opposed to the one that has oranges. Now you know that they like this blue for whatever reason. You can actually hyper personalize, right? Take their experience and now shift everything to shades of blue because you know that that's what's driving their action on your site. These are really great opportunities for us to create better experiences for our customers uh, and users of our application. Now you'll also notice there's this feature of computer vision called OCR. And OCR allows us to go in, right, this is an image. It's from like gooddayquote.com, right? O OCR uh, or, or being able to click and drag this image or try and grab the text off this image is typically pretty difficult to do. But in this case, you can see it's able to pull all that off. Now, why is this important? So imagine again, if a user passes you an image, you can now grab text from that image, which was old, otherwise difficult to do, and now you can execute a search on any of the content that you pulled off, right? Notice here, it gives me back Confucius. 
So now I could go in and do a search on Confucius and pull back things like YouTube or SoundCloud, uh, you know, audio or voiceovers or, or anything that's related to that content. Again, enriching the content that I can return back to the user as a result of their request. So really interesting uh, stuff and it's great to be able to build an application that just demonstrates this capability. It gives you a chance to review the metadata that you get back from these services. And so as a learning tool, I think it's really, um, really useful. So let's jump to how will you learn this? <laughs> so I will take you over to uh, the GitHub project. You can actually type in um, aka.ms slash intelligent kiosk sample. And we'll put the, that link in the show notes. And you can see in this sample, it provides you the ability to rebuild this. And as always, we provide a nice readme file that'll walk you through what you need in order to build it. It is a UWP app, so be aware of that. Um, and then running the sample, right? You'll need to have a development environment. You'll need to be ready to deploy it as a UWP app. And here's all the different projects that are included. It is not a direct match to what I just showed you, but we're constantly adding more and more projects into this area and updating it all the time. Most importantly is if you test some of this and you want some help, you can submit GitHub issues and our team will review those issues and even you could contribute to some of these projects if you want to. What a great opportunity not only to learn by doing, but then also to even maybe make a difference in another person who's trying to learn this by either fixing something, making something more clear, or even adding an entire sample uh, to, the t to, the, to the project. So one last thing I wanna mention is the ability to build this uh, at the edge, right? Using a, a device, a Raspberry Pi in this case. So not only can you, of course, build this as an application that'll run on a machine or in the cloud uh, through a web application or through an application native on a, a computer, but you also now can start playing around with building devices and integrating these models into devices. Really cool stuff. So in this uh, really quick week um, episode, we decided to just give you a chance to take a look at some of the projects that are available for you today that you could build that demonstrate some of the common capabilities provided with cognitive services. So if you go in, again, uh, take a look at the show notes. We provide the link to go and build this yourself. Um, and you can also download the app and play with it there too. So hopefully you found this interesting and uh, I encourage you to start building something really cool today. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.